Your event is starting. I believe we're live, Bradford. Yay! Hey, welcome to Worship Tutorials. Live. Brad and I are going to talk about gear today. Yay! First, first piece of gear. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do this. Is our mugs. They're okay. $30 each. Yeah, it's not too far off. <laughs> I didn't set the price. The price was out of my hands. The price of making them was not our... So, there, look, look, I'm all decked out in Worship Tutorials. Let me show you the t-shirt. It's not my vibe. We have, we have mugs and t-shirts. Would you wear one if I bought you one? Maybe Brad I'm doesn't extreme. like the... I like... I doesn't notice, like the notice the... Because he's the t-shirt. Well, the, the I got one over the top of it. Um, let us know if you can hear us and see us all right. Hey, Bradford. Thank you for the super chat. You're welcome. Do you have a question you'd like us to answer? <laughs> <laughs> um, so Where, here's here's your question. What was that? Ask me where you can get the mugs and t-shirts. And things. Where could I get the mugs and t-shirts and things, Brian? Thank you for asking, Brad. I'm glad you did. There's a link worth my super below chat. the video. Uh, YouTube gives you like two free super chats. Is that right? Yeah, I have. Um, Brian introduced me into the world of YouTube Premium. Mm. Um, and he was like, "Once that I, why you did it? That's why it gave me yeah. two free ones." Um, YouTube Premium you is... You never see an ad again. You never see an ad again. And if you're maybe like us... Well, no, because we're the one doing this live stream. If you're like me, I like to drive and like watch I heard slash language. listen to YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. I do and too. I like to not have the temptation to look. So you can turn your phone off and it still plays in the background. Or you can turn the screen is off. That a, is that a premium uh, Yeah, you can... So, so like right now... So you can't do on. that on normal YouTube? Correct. You hear this? So I turned it off. I just assume that's how YouTube worked. It is not. So I've been spoiled by YouTube Premium. They they want your money. So hmm. I did it for that. And um, also, I was traveling and I saved some videos to watch when I was flying. Yeah. That's nice. Oh, yeah. You can you can download videos. You can videos download to your videos. Phone. Yeah. YouTube Premium is cool. But, uh, and I, apparently, you get two free super chats with YouTube Premium that you can dole out to the creator of your choice in their live videos. So after YouTube you can just takes their cut, make it rain with with dollar bills. It's not even dollars. It's, it's not. Cents. It's not even nine cents. It's not even full dollar. Um, and after YouTube takes their cut, we get a cool fifty nine cents <laughs> or Gmail or Google. So. Curtis Heller, I, <laughs> Mark, I meant to say that earlier. Mark Cummings says, "How do I get a message to Fuller?" This question intrigues me, Mark. Tell let let me know a little more of the backstory here. How do I get a message to Fuller? Phil Keggy was not quite sure. So if uh, if you uh, have watched the video, it's part of the worship manual. But we did a video. Fuller and I each did a video where we interviewed one another. We should do one for you too. Meet Bradford Mitchell. Because uh, I have cool. all the answers. Mm -hmm. And so we were just like getting to know us a little bit. And in Fuller's video, he talked about how he did, he recorded some music with Phil Keggy, who's like a legend. Uh, and uh, so Mark Cummings says, uh, how do I get a message to Fuller? Phil Keggy was not quite sure he remembered him. And he mentioned something about long hair and trying to date his daughter. So this is a story I need to, to hear. So Mark, do you know Phil Keggy? And if so... Does Phil remember Fuller trying think, to date his daughter? That, that well, sounds... he said he wasn't quite sure. Right. That <laughs> so, he, yeah. we need to know, inquiring minds, you can get, if you want to get in touch with Fuller, you can get in touch with him uh, by just emailing fuller at worshiptutorials.com. Yeah. Give him Brad is Bradford at, that. I am Brian at yes. worshiptutorials.com. Correct. We, the three of us, make up the staff of Worship Tutorials. <laughs> Uh, and then some other figures that we have a great media company. I think it's super cool. I don't know what all that goes on with this, but the guys who help Brian with like the website and all. Oh yeah, yeah, they're legit. Those guys, M is good. M they're a local. M, the letter they're M. They're a local company here in North Carolina. They they do all the social media and hosting and stuff for our church. Yeah, just how I got hooked up with them. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're awesome. They they really care about Dave the Jones. website and all that. That's super cool. Two they're weeks like ago. the only other people though. And then we have lots of friends, but. I remember what Mark was talking about. <laughs> Mark Cummings says, two weeks ago, Fuller said to say hi to him because he was going to the concert. Keggy gave me some qualifiers. <laughs> I have to know. I'm going to ask Fuller about this. Yeah, well, Fuller, I remember him saying that. Uh, Fuller, we've Phil had Keggy some questions about some where, his songs on it. where is Fuller. Fuller has uh, Fuller has, has some family in town, mm -hmm. and there's some things going on with, with, with that, and so he is um, 
spending some time with his family right now. Yeah. Okay. And we always get lots of questions about gear on these when we're doing mm. them, and we, we try to stay semi-focused. It may not seem focused to you, but we try not to just talk gear because Fuller is amazing, but Fuller... He doesn't oh, He will tell gear. you. He will tell you. He doesn't really care about gear. He will buy something if he needs it, and then that's about it. Like, mm-hmm. then he just uses it. And, like, he's got, like, ten guitars, but they're not very pricey because Fuller just... Oh, yeah, he just he pieces just, them together. He just loves to play and just does it. So we try not to do gear when he's around, not because he doesn't like talking gear, I but... Like shoes. Thank you. I got new I got new, new shoes. Are you going to be on Preachers and Sneakers with those? Did those cost you $600? They did not. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, that cost me... Not cheap. 140 Oh, yeah. That's too rich for my blood. Look at this. 60 No, 50 bucks. Well, Look at that. There's something the on the bottom pair, of my shoe. The last what is pair that? I got. These are New Balance. I need to go out and mow the yard in them. Turn them green. Go full dad mode. Well, I had these had pollen on them, and I took a paint, painting brush and dusted all the pollen off. Oh, man. The pollen here is nasty. It is terrible this year. Yeah, it's... Well, ridiculous. I didn't finish answering your Super Chat question. <laughs> You can purchase <laughs> uh, t-shirts and mugs, uh, worship tutorials, uh, I would call it swag, but it's not stuff we all get. You have to pay for it. Um, but isn't swag kind of like the understood term for this kind of stuff? It is, but technically swag is stuff we all get. So like if you go, you know, if you go to a conference If you go to like something. a paper convention in Philadelphia. Yes. yes. You with get, your branch and your former employee. You get a employee. piece of paper and you can ask uh, Jerome Bettis if he wants to come. <laughs> Why do they call him the bus? Because I think he's afraid to fly. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, if you if you're familiar with our live streams, the office references will will go deep and often. But there's a link below. It's a Spreadshirt deal. So Spreadshirt handles like all the manufacturing and shipping and stuff. So you can order to your heart's so content. We have a few T-shirts. We're and the middleman, and actually not even because middlemen typically do stuff. Brian, you just created these, I just right? It. Yeah. And then, so you're ordering through Spreadshirt, and so if you got problems, it's more on their end. Yeah, like we don't, we don't do anything. We don't even see what no you buy. No one's gonna have problems. Spreadshirt's great. It's no, well, paper. I said okay. Yes. If I understand what you mean. All right. So here's the thing. We're gonna talk gear today. And last night, Bradford and I both uh, sent out some messages on the Instagram. Yeah. Which. And so we're gonna. Which is another we discussion we're gonna have. This, but um. So we got a, a lot of questions from you guys on Instagram, so we want to address some of those. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about Instagram. So this is the Worship Tutorials Instagram account, and uh, this is the WT Tone Instagram account. So um, Brad and I had this conversation the other day, yesterday. Yesterday. Worship Tutorials has about about six thousand followers, fifty seven hundred ish. Mm-hmm. Uh, WT Tone has about a thousand followers. Yep. Uh, Some of those may cross over. Yeah, a lot of them are probably a lot of the WT Tone people are probably worse tutorials follow. They're probably yeah crossover. We're gonna we're gonna combine and conquer. That's not the, how they say it. Usually they say divide, but we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna do the opposite gonna, of divide. I and think conquer. we're just gonna focus it all onto one Instagram account. We have a goal mm-hmm. to reach ten thousand followers on Instagram. Yes. We have a goal to reach one million subscribers on YouTube. Well, we want we're about we want more there than ten thousand on, on Instagram, side. but but we. Yeah. So if you're not familiar though, uh, on on Instagram, um, you may see some people who have like the they they will post something in stories and they have a swipe up link, and that is a lot easier to get you to go like. So if we make yeah. a new patch, um, or if we have yeah. a new video and all that, and so you can't do that unless you have ten thousand followers, or if you're a verified account. So yeah. like if for some reason John Mayer's account he had to start over again. Mm. Like, because it was John Mayer, the second he started his account, and even if he, he had, had, like, two followers, followers, he could he could get that swipe up if you're, like, verified. But we're not yeah. we're not that kind of legit. So, the <laughs> goal is to combine and get to 10,000, and we're going to do a little bit of each. So, like, we'll do worship leading stuff and guitar stuff, um, but it's all in one place. Yeah. And yeah, I pay so attention to what WT Tone more than Brian does, right, and he Brad pays attention manages to, that account. yeah, worship tutorials. So now it'll just be probably be a lot easier for everyone. So WT Tone is going to go away. Yeah, we'll give you a heads up. Yeah. But, but if you're not following Worship Tutorials, you should go do that. Yeah, so just go to Instagram. I think it's just Worship Tutorials. It's At all Worship Tutorials. It's all, yeah, because I used to have some accounts where I had to take some letters out because it was too long. 
for the account name, but it is Worship Tutorials. The whole thing. Just no spaces, Worship Tutorials. Follow us. Okay, so we had some questions on we're on uh, we did on Instagram on Instagram. So I'm gonna look these up. How do I do this? So I go to my story. Yep. Uh, and go here. There they are. See, Brad has to teach me how to use Instagram. Cause... It's not as intuitive if you don't use it. Like I figured it out, but yeah. it took me a while. There's a lot of things you can do with it that are really cool, like in the stories and stuff, asking questions, interactive things that I didn't know how to do. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, uh, I'm gonna grab some that I thought were really good questions. Uh, Favorite, I liked this one. This is from Not John Denver. So who are, who is Not John Denver on Instagram? If it's you're literally here? Not John Denver. Sign, out. Sign on it. and tell us. I recognize this person's face, though. I, I've interacted with this with this guy before. I guess we could all be Not John Denver. Yeah, except for John Denver. Except for John. Well, um, he says this. What is your favorite Strat-style guitar? Mm. Which, which, the answer to this question uh, will feed into another question. That was that was asked several times about. Let's hear Brad's Sir Strat. Where is your Sir Strat? Is uh, it it's, in in, it's in the hallway. So, what's your favorite Strat style guitar? Well, oh, we're getting a whole bunch of followers on WT Tone, like all of a sudden. That's awesome. Which that account is going. The WT Tone account is going to die. So that's all right. For right now, you can enjoy it until then. We'll try and push you to the worst tutorial. Yeah. Account. Um. So. Thank you, Brad Miller. He subbed to us on Instagram. Thank you. Yes. I had I had We're a, do a cool, let's do a awesome giveaway. Brad's been telling me to do giveaways. I know because that's how you get for people. Instagram. When we hit ten thousand, we'll do an awesome one. But maybe in the meantime, I thought we could give away that Boss RV six over there Ooh. since I never use it. Ooh. My personal favorite reverb reverb pedal. That's pretty awesome. The RV five maybe, but anyway, Brad, your favorite strat. So I had an MJT. <laughs> made for me and I really liked it but the problem was was that it made me realize what I liked about strats and it helped me realize I needed something else and so MJT it's so customizable that I needed to move on um, to find something else and so I, I still like them I think if I had uh, like I wouldn't mind another strat you know but at this point I'm trying to widen the arsenal not deepen it that would yeah. be deepening the arsenal to have two, to have two strats. To have two strats. Mm -hmm. um, I have a Sir Strat, which I love, but it's got this like... You keep talking, I'm going to go get it. Okay. It's got this modern vibe, which is kind of Sir's deal. Yeah, well, they do both. They do vintage. They do, yeah. Well, strats. even still, I feel like even with my... Never mind me, I'll be right back. <laughs> I even feel like with my Sir Telly, it's, uh, it's a little more modernized. Um, and same with my Strat. So I love that for praise and worship because it can do the strat tone, but with a humbucker um, in it and like just the way it feels overall, it feels like a, a new guitar. Um, and it's 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 a very nice, it's probably one of my favorites. Um, I mean all three of my guitars I I love. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. I was gonna I was gonna play a little bit while you talk. Can I, Here you go. Can I put my hands on it? Because I'm not gonna say this is my favorite strat, but I wanna I want to touch it before I say that. Somebody it. wanted to that hear it. I just played it, so now you heard it. I was going to say, <laughs> this was not going to be my suggestion. You heard it. Wait, it's in a few videos. There's a Reckless Love Helix Patch video it's in. There's a Lincoln Brewster Helix Patch video it's in. Um, but I love the trim system. That, the Godo bridge that Sir uses is amazing. Is it's it's five, a two-screw. 510? Is that what they call it? Uh, yeah, I think so. Godo 510. Mm. So it's two screws here, and it floats and feels smooth as butter. Smooth as butter? Yeah. Sir um, does not put anything on their guitars that's not like... Yeah. The, the only thing that I want... I would like want to change these out, but I don't think you can get these same knobs to feel more expensive. Like the rest just of the... the knobs? Good, yeah, just the knobs. But I don't... Why would I do that? So, um, the Humbucker is a V60... No, that's not right. What, what model Sir is this? Did you already say that? That's a classic... Pro. This is a Sir Classic Pro. So they can call you, them a classic. Can you currently buy this? Yeah, this for the production they, model? they Sir Sir is actually you bought it used, right? I did. Sir is actually they're not readily available. Um, well, that's not what I mean. So like you get you get stores that order them, but the stores order the way they want them to look. So it's not like there's not like a model. They're a little bit of a custom. Kind of, sort of, yeah. So like you can get one just like this if you look around because it's a pretty standard offering. 
Um, but like, I wanted one like you this like, for a while. You like white guitars. I love white guitars. I don't. I don't know why. They just look so classy to me. But like, also they don't look like overly classy. Um, like a white falcon is just too much for me. The white and gold, too much. But this looks like a nice little. Mm. Um, so yeah. So this is your favorite. Strat. This is my favorite. Like for like what I do. Mm -hmm. The Shelton that Brian has though. So that's my answer. I knew it was gonna be blew me away and like I want one of those. It's behind you. Can you grab it? I can. So I will say this about the Sir. Um, I and have somebody I asked have about an, Anderson. We've I've uh, played I've some. Played and they're, one. they're cool, but. I mean, I don't feel we have cool a, like We this. have a friend who loves Anderson. Yeah, he like got one, and now I think he owns like three. And he's like, he knows what he's doing and talking about with him. Uh, so I have a Sir Alt T, and that man, like the thing about Sirs is they all feel, I mean, they have different neck profiles and things, but they all kind of have the same vibe to them. The Alt T, like, they feel so good. The Alt T, if I just touch the neck of the Alt T, it's the same. It feels almost identical. And it is it. And it this, is, sorry. and it, and it's so it's like got a bit of a matte finish to the back of the neck. A little bit. The fret, the 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 width of the neck is a little wider. The nut width is a little bit wider than a lot of guitars, which I like, because it gives it gives you a little more room on the on the fretboard. Uh, like the the Jennings, for example, is a little narrower, and that's just a preference thing. Some some players like it narrower because it's easier to. It's just kind of a lot of it depends on what you learned on, to be honest. I I've found. Mm hmm. What people are used to, but Sirs are just man. They feel so good, and they play they so good, and that they they all use for the most part all use stainless steel frets. Which if you've never played a guitar with stainless steel frets, they have a really silky. Like when you move a string on the stainless steel. It just feels like glass. I somebody and, somebody brought up a point as the uh, recently. I can't remember what they said. There's something about saying the steel frets I hadn't considered. That I was like, that's a good point. I think the tone. Maybe that was it. And maybe I was like, eh, who cares? Well, but I don't remember. You can what it argue was. that it changes the tone, and you could argue that it doesn't really that much. Yeah, but they um, feel really, really now, good. Now nickel frets will feel that way if you polish them. Is that? Oh, is this nickel? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, other, the other frets are nickel typically. Uh, there's some outside noise going on. I've got some, some work happening on my patio, which I'm pretty excited about. My parents are coming over this weekend. We're going to grill some burgers out on the new... We're having a new patio installed, which is going to be sweet. Uh, something my wife and I have wanted to do forever. Finally, we're doing it. We've never had a nice patio. I, I just need, need a, a, I just need need a, a grill. fire pit. I just need a grill. Anyway, um, so th they feel great, and they all the sirs do this thing too, where the 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 neck heel is a little bit like the neck the the body is tapered in a little bit, so mm -hmm. it's just getting up to these frets is a little feels a little nicer. There's Easy less, breezy. There's less stuff in your way. Yep. Um. Yeah. So sirs are really really. We often we are often asked uh, between Shelton Sir and Jennings because those are the guitars and and. For some, in some cases, Duesenberg, which is over here, and uh, there's that. That's a uh, Gretsch uh, Sparkle Jet behind me. I had a question about that. We're often asked about like what we would prefer between these, what we'd recommend, and it's just they're all so good, and they all have a little different vibe going on. Yeah. Um, there's just so many things to consider. Brian and I have played so many guitars at this point. We've been at this for a while. Well, and I and I'm lucky. Well, I don't want to interrupt you. Go ahead. Well, just like I'm gonna, I'm gonna we've been we've some, been at this for so long that like the question which one's better or which you prefer is like it's not there's really not a cut and dry answer no. because like I love always, the Shelton. It always depends. Yeah, I, I love the Shelton, but like this Sir is set up like with the electronics and stuff more the way I prefer to play. Um, yeah. But like I mean, there's just so many things to consider to take into consideration. So like. We've had a few super chats, by the way. We have. I want to say thank you to Thomas Kim and to Sean Brown. Yeah, I'm not. There weren't any questions involved with them. Yeah, but if you guys have something, say something, please. We'll make sure to get but, it. Yeah, go ahead. But like, I mean, somebody has asked me. I've gotten asked oh, recently, like, well, which would you prefer, your Elliot or your Sirs? And I'm like, yes, because that's why they're I different. have I have all three, and they're so yeah. very different. Now, I don't own the Elliot, but I yeah. do own uh, a Sir Alt T. Mm -hmm. I own two Sheltons, this one and a Red Jazz Master, which is awesome. And I own the Jennings and a Duesenberg. And the I'm, I'm, uh, don't want for awesome guitars around here. But, um, so having 
having all of them at my disposal, like I don't know that there's a there isn't a best. It's like what I would prefer. Brad always Brad always laughs at me because I'll send him a text message and I'll be like, I think I think I've decided that the Sir is the best guitar I own. And then like the and next like, week, two, no, yeah. I think I've decided that the the Gretsch is my favorite. And I and <laughs> I've said this to him about almost all of them: the Duesenberg, the the Shelton, the Sir, the, the Jennings. And so it's like it's almost like. Whatever I'm playing at the moment is my favorite thing ever. <laughs> yes. Uh, but this this thing is just crazy awesome yeah. to me. Um, and I'm going to do a review of this. I've been meaning to do a review for a long yet. time. No. Because it does a really a, a ton of stuff with, with the switching. It. I'll keep playing it. Uh, <laughs> like these are, these are actually four single coils. That's why it's called the Skyflight 4. Um, and you can turn these guys on and off individually. And I often will turn, this is a Strat pickup and this is a P90. So I will often turn the Strat bridge off and use the, I like this P90 a lot. It's a, these are all Porter pickups. It's a Porter H90. Um, yeah, so this is my favorite Strat. Brad's is the Sir. I had a quick question here. Bueller. 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 He must have uh, he must have just hopped in then because we just talked about it. <laughs> no more love. Well, no more love for the MJTs. Well, you mentioned you had one. Yeah, yeah. I, so I mean, it's just one it, of my rotating favorite guitars is my MJT Telecaster that's right over there on the wall. It's also a white guitar. Yeah, we have a lot of white guitars. Between I know. Us. I don't know what it is. So there is lots of love for MJT around here. There is. There is. Walt DaCosta, thank you for your super chat. Had to sell all of my gear so I don't own any pedals. I'm thinking about building a pedal board. Would y'all recommend... I like it, would y'all. I'm from Oklahoma, so that resonates with me. Uh, the HX Effects. So, and that ties into a question we had on the, on the Instagram, which I see that we have some new followers. That's awesome. So on Instagram, we had, how do I... Uh, pros and cons of the primary modeling systems. Mm -hmm. How do I find a fitting helix tone? Or how do you dial, so how do you dial in the helix? I, w I would read that as, you, as that. You download our free <laughs> AC30 patch. There's been, so there were a number of questions on Instagram. Um, tips for new helix owners. Uh, one question simply said HX effect. I assume you want to know something about HX effects. <laughs> um, so, okay. Nick Nalinar, whoever that is, says the real reason Nick isn't with Worship Tutorials anymore. He wants to know that. That's Nick Rice. I know. Oh. I was making a joke. Oh, I didn't know if you actually knew that. Nick and I had a falling out, and I told him that I couldn't live within 100 miles of him. So, he said, so he, get the heck out of here. So Nick, he white fanged him. So Nick moved, <laughs> per my request. No, that's, that's not true. He moved. I miss Nick exactly so much. Why. He moved. He uh, he lives in Ash in the Asheville area right now. I'm a little jealous because he's in the beautiful mountains. Asheville's beautiful. Yeah, Nick, we miss you. Come back. Come visit. We'll make videos together. Okay, so let's talk about it. Uh, Walt, thank you for your super chat. Like, <laughs> Chris Sly is texting us. You guys are crazy. <laughs> well, I think that's because we I called. Know. Yeah, because. <laughs> Because we, well, the reason we were late here on the live video is because I could not find the pr appropriate cable. <laughs> yes, and so we texted Chris because he was here and to Chris see if was he here would, last week to see if maybe he accidentally grabbed it just so we would know, and yeah. he said no, and then we found it, and then we were both. Uh, Brad said thanks for nothing. <laughs> yeah, I said thanks for nothing, man. And then Chris <laughs> Brian goes, yeah, you jerk or something. I like said that. I found it, found it myself. Yeah, no thanks to you. <laughs> Chris is Chris that lives in Nashville. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, okay. Um, let's talk effects. about it. Let's talk about HX effects. Well, okay. So, um, Walt, you don't have anything, so I don't own any pedals. Here's the question, Walt, if you're listening. I know this is a little delayed, but maybe you can answer while we talk about this. Do you have an amp? Because that would uh, do. You, do you own an amp? Do you want to run something into a real amp, or do you want a modeling solution? Yeah. Because HX effects is awesome. They are. They I are. have one over there. Yes. Somewhere. Where is it? I can't see it. Oh, it's on the pedal board on the ground up there. Oh, it's on the pedal board. Yeah. Okay. So, um, HX Effects will cover a ton of ground for you. Uh, it's all of the Helix modeling stuff. All the pedals. But none of the amps. Yeah, none of the amps. Or preamps. So, um, 
So you can run all of their parts of this guitar are coming off of my hand. You can run all of their drives, modulation, reverb, delay, EQ, compression, all of that. Mm -hmm. So you can, and you can run nine things at once. Yeah, so there's so six buttons, so three don't have to be on a button if they're like always on things mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. Yeah. And so you could legitimately have an entire board, which we have a, a preset. We actually have a couple of them. We just haven't released the second version yet. Oh, we did it? Not uh, yet. We need to do that. Maybe this afternoon. We always got stuff to do. I know. So, um, yeah, you can, you, HX effects can take up your entire board. It can, can be your entire board if you want. Yeah. Um, what a lot of people do, I think, with it is use it for delays and reverbs. Yeah. And so they'll run a compressor and a couple overdrives in front of it, which is interesting. Why I don't know why I'm thinking about this. If you don't follow JHS pedals on, on YouTube, or Josh Scott, is it JHS pedals? Well, it's JHS. Yeah. But Josh Scott is JHS. Yes. It's like, it's his middle name, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, he just did a video. Did you watch it? It was Which yesterday one? about Behringer? Behringer pedals. I saw it, but I didn't watch it. Dude, it was good. You got to respect a guy who runs a pedal company and like, like he does features everybody else's videos. pedals. Yeah. He yeah. does whole videos on other companies. But he was talking about Behringer pedals versus the, the, the boss pedals or the other pedals they model. Mm -hmm. And he did a, he did an AB comparison of the Behringer Tube Screamer and a first edition Japanese Ibanez 808, and you can't hear the difference. Wow. It's exactly the same. And the Behringer is $30. So, they what I would... To, they do tend to be noisy, I've because I've used a couple of them, but the like... Thing, the thing about them is, well, they're also plastic. Yeah. So they're not going to last you forever. For, yeah. But if you're on a budget, like Behringer, you can get some good... There's some really great options out there that are pretty inexpensive. Um, so, yeah. So, Walt... Um, I, I would highly recommend HX Effects to cover, yeah. like, the reverbs and delays in the Helix are awesome. I love them. Like, I, you know, I don't think, maybe they don't, they're not quite at the level of, like, Strymon, but they're not far behind. No. I mean, um, the, the gap isn't as big as the price would suggest. Yeah. How's that? And now, like, having used Axe Effects for a little while, a, a Fractal um, released new reverbs recently, and those are on the level of of like even tied in my opinion they're yeah. really really close yeah um and they're a little more uh pristine sounding than the helix ones but i will say this helix has the glitz reverb and the glitz reverb That's has become cool. like one of my all-time favorite reverb sounds it's it has surpassed the boss rv6 for me <laughs> RV5. that reverb it has this really unique character to it and you can make it sound like it sounds really thick, but in a way that doesn't like really get in too much into the way. Like it, it's all about how you dial it in. But yeah. I really like the. In fact, I miss it when I don't play the Helix. I mean, that reverb is awesome. Mm. So um, yeah. So if you're so let's let's move this into like the modeling stuff now. Well, if you don't have a amp and you want to use an amp, HX Stomp is really cool. Yeah. If you're gonna use other. I, I think, I mean, you could absolutely get by with HX effects um, being everything you use. But, like, for me, I like pedals. So, mm -hmm. I wouldn't use the HX effects as an all-in. And, like, I use the Helix. I've been using that a lot lately because I've had a lot going on, like, during the week at work. And so, I'm not making presets to use with my, my big board, um, like, with the mm -hmm. RJM. I mean, like, I mean, I just made some and I use it this past week and it freaking rips and I love it. But um, I've just been focusing on some other things and just wanting to just play. Um, but the stomp is, is I mean, you can use it all in one as well, but I think where it shines is if you're going to only use an HX effects for delay and reverb, mm -hmm. like if that's your goal, the same price, I would say just get the stomp regardless. Because you can use delay and reverb. You can use delay and reverb, but and you can use six blocks, but you could also make, like I know some guys who are using it as like a Swiss Army knife thing, and they're using it just in case like they their amps go down, or if they're playing somewhere where it's they like can't use their amp, or yeah. they're like running stereo, they're using like an amp from the HX Effects, and they're using like their tube amp, or like yeah. I mean, there's a plethora plethora of ways to use it, and if you're not gonna use like six effects on it at once, the mm. HX Effects like at the same time, um, or if you're a guy who likes to make sounds per song. Mm -hmm. Like in you, so you can switch presets on the stomp. Um, then, like, I think that's 
I mean, they're same price, and you get amps with it, so it's it's killer. And the, if you're not a believer in the Helix amp modeling, you can and you can run IRs in it too for cabs. Yeah. Um, the HX Stomp. I this is my this is my theory about this is what I say about it. It's like the it's their gateway drug <laughs> to the lines to the to the amp modeling stuff yes. because a lot of people will get it because we've known a lot of people in the Kemper world who have bought it as a backup. Yeah. And so, or just something to have on a board, you know. Yeah. Having and, a digital amp can be risky. Like, right. Something weird could just happen. And, it and work. so, like, and I, I think we've seen a lot of people who bought it as a backup and tried it out and were like, man. Yeah, I've seen, I've really seen guys good. sell their Kempers. And, like, leave Kemper. Yeah, because you can use two amps with it. You can run stereo. Yeah. So, it's um, HX Stomp. Uh, is just awesome. It yeah. is a kill, and, and nobody else has. Well, okay, the uh, amplifier yeah, can be but, considered kind but of it's, the same thing, but it's not quite it's on the small same and, level. Yeah, I've heard it's on the same level tone wise, mm -hmm. but it's one amp. We haven't tried it. We haven't tried it ourselves. I've heard clips, and I think it sounds good, but mm -hmm. like you can only use one amp, which fine. Yeah. You could buy two of them if you think it sounds better, mm -hmm. and it's the same price as one stomp. And if you don't really use effects, I think it's got like delay and verb, or I think there's like a boost, or I don't really know enough about it. I'm not familiar it. with what it. But it's what smaller. It it's more like a pedal size. It's more like um, like if you've ever seen a JHS kilt, the original version, or like it's about that dual, size. Like a dual overdrive. Size yeah, dual pedal. overdrive pedal, but it's more vertical instead of horizontal. So like okay. it's it's not ginormous, and it doesn't require the same power uh, requirements as a, uh, as a stomp. So yeah, I mean maybe that's more up your alley. I don't know. Yeah, Carlo, thank you for the super chat. Um, he says, I learned so much from you in regards to playing Hillsong. Oh, playing the Hillsong songs. Okay. Uh, thank you. Appreciate that, Carlo. Thank He's you. in Australia. Super yes. Cool. What time is it where you live, Carlo? Is is Australia about 12 hours difference? I know China is about 12 hours. I know. My wife, so it's noon here. My wife travels to China on occasion because she, her work takes her there. Yeah. And so it's like exactly the opposite. It's, it's like almost all the way on the other side of the world. Yeah. Anyway, for a while there, it was pretty sweet because she went to China like twice in one year, and so she and she flies with American, and she racked up like all these points, all the miles. So like every time we like if she and I would go anywhere, they always get we always got free. first class. Well, they bump you to first or class you first because class. you have it's like an automatic thing. So not all the people that are in first class are paying all the money. It's just maybe they travel a lot. For yeah, business. my my best friend travels. So my wife and my wife's week. work takes her there. So hopefully, uh, okay. So uh, let's 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 take that to um, let's talk about the pros and cons of the modeling system. We've talked about before Helix we do that. And Kemper. Let me say We've one thing. We've done this before, though. We have done Many this before. Times. If there is anything not related to Kemp to modeling effects stuff or more general stuff, and there's a question about that, get those in because. We, we talk about, like, if you follow us, we talk about, we're not going to say, I'll tell you right now, there is no best, so we're not yeah. going to tell you that, because we genu we use all of them. Mm -hmm. um, there's be there's what's best for you, and, like, the way you prefer to do things and use things. Um, they're all great, and we're not, like, like nobody's paying us to mm -hmm. say these things. We genuinely love it, um, and so there's no best, but we're, we'll, ta we'll go down I, this road. I will say, I own... The Helix, the Kemper, the Axe FX3, and the AX8. I feel almost weird saying that. I mean, wh who needs all that stuff? And it's only because, the only reason I own all that stuff is because I... Um, we make stuff for it. We make products for it. And so it's, it's, it's our source of income. Walt, thank you again for your other super chat. Uh, and he's, Walt said he does have an amp. I think HX FX... Plus a few drive pedals is just like, the, if I ran an amp, well, that's perfect. that is I my think, board yeah. that's sitting right over there. Yeah. That is my board. Um, and I think it's awesome. And you can also do an effects loop and use the compressor in the HX effects, yeah, yeah, which is pretty awesome. Do. So plug right into the HX effects and you can use it as your hub. And you can either yeah. use the HX effects to turn on your overdrive pedals if yeah. you put an effects loop. Put your drives in the effects loop. Or yeah. you can just go like compressor and then go out of HX effects into your drive pedals back into HX effects. Um, and you can do that. So there's lots of ways to use it. But, but okay, so back to the modeling back stuff. Back to the so modeling. I, and I own all those systems. Fractal, AX8, Axe FX3, Kemper, and Helix. Is there anything else? 
HX effects and stuff. Yeah. But those the big ones, I bought them all with my own money because I wanted to develop products on uh, with them. Yeah. And, and they and they've, you know, that's they what we do. For, that's yeah. And so um yeah, like Brad said, we're not like no company is paying us to say anything. And uh, we're dead serious. Like we are not like just playing we're not playing Sweden just to be play Sweden. We're one hundred percent neutral. Like they, they are absolutely <laughs> well, I'm all great make, for what they I'm do. I'm gonna make a statement. Okay. Well, you can make. A statement. If I had, if I didn't, the make, statements ref- coming out of Brian's mouth do not necessarily reflect the statements that I feel as well. Continue. Well, you you would make a different one. I, I think we're both gonna let's both say this and then we'll talk about okay. these things. If I had to pit, if I didn't, if worship tutorials wasn't a thing and I was just playing guitar, you know, at church and I needed a system, I think I would. The Helix would be what I would live with. Because mm-hmm. it's just, um, it's so convenient. It's so easy to set stuff up. It's so versatile. It sounds so good. Um, and it's just, I I pre-ordered it. Now, this gives you a little bit of a history. I, I played an HD500X for a few years before Helix. And when they announced the Helix, I literally pre-ordered it from Sweetwater. The, I remember that. The day it was announced. And I thought you were crazy because... Like nobody, no samples out. They yep. just announced it and had like some clips in a video, and I pre-ordered it. But I was like on the line six. I I believed in them, um, and so I used the Helix for like three plus years as my only. And so I feel like there isn't. I don't own a piece of gear that I feel like I know better than the Helix. Mm-hmm. Like that, yeah. I know. I feel like I know that thing inside and out. What it can do, what it what what I want it to do. So I would probably use Helix now. I have been using for the past few months Axe Effects Three. Yeah, and that thing is ridiculous. It is. It's like I will it's say like that a Helix it, on steroids. I would say that it in the in the tone department it 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 will beat the Helix. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also think in a mix you would be hard pressed to hear it. Yeah, and you can't beat the ease of use of throwing so, the board down and it's yeah, ready to it's go. It's way more expensive. Way more. It's like double. Yeah, it is. It's, if you want to do, double. if you yeah. want an expression pedal, the foot controller, and the unit, it's double what a new Helix has yeah. in its so all. So Helix is going to run you sixteen hundred. Axe Effects three with the the twelve button foot controller, which you can't even get because it's it's like the wait list is crazy. Yeah, and their expression pedal is thirty two hundred dollars. Plus, you have to have a mic cable. Because the Axe FX3 is twenty five hundred dollars, the foot controller is seven hundred, and the expression pedal is a hundred. I think that's the math. And then you have to have a XLR cable to go between the controller, controller, and the and the rack mount unit. Yeah. And then you and have you to have a TRS cable to go between the. So like it's more than double if you yeah. consider cables. Yeah, you got to get some. But cables. it's like it is crazy how awesome it sounds and there's a I mean, feel thing too that you can't get mm-hmm. with the helix even with irs but yeah and so um, everybody notices that yeah so but you can get the helix to be so close uh you can it's just we've and, done and that. brad your preference and what you use most is i love pe- <laughs> he's just he's dodging well, well i so i love pedals <laughs> yeah. and it, i'm not gonna get away from that um i've been using the helix a lot lately because of the convenience and I don't feel like I was sacrificing tone. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, we're here to talk gear, so, I mean, that's why we're talking about gear. Mm-hmm. But, like, I don't care about when I lead worship. My, my my first thought is not, man, my tone's terrible. I can't lead worship. So it's not that. But, like, I still, like, when I play it, I still enjoy it. I don't feel like I'm, you know, using second best. I like the Kemper, but for guys who use the Kemper as an all-in unit... Somebody said the Helix floor is $1,000 now. I, that, I don't think that's true. I don't think so. No. I mean, if you're talking about the LT. But they actually had to go up in price because of... There's the some, tariffs. The tariffs China. and stuff. Um, the reason why they're I 15, think the... They're 15 on Sweetwater. Yeah. 1600 bucks for the floor. The LT is a little cheaper. But the go ahead. The LT is. Um, the reason I love the Kemper and like the reason why I think it's so incredible is because you can be playing a set one day and have your pedals ready and like you know use whatever amp you want but then like the next day you're like man i just listened to a bunch of this artist and they like to use this amp and i have a profile of it and i want to just and so like that's where i think what i think is super cool about it because i like using (laughs) pedals it is i love using pedals and like i can just change a knob and have whatever amp i want and like you can do that with a helix sure but like i love pedals like i keep saying that 
So like I don't well, think you can. Well, if you watch your recent pedalboard de- video yeah, that we you'll did, see. Bradford has a spaceship in front of him yeah. every day. It's Mission yes. Control. At I his love point. it. And <laughs> like I also I'm working on like another board that's got like the opposite of the pedals I have, and I can't really explain that. When you when it's done, you'll see. But like I like using pedals to kind of like just more creative to me. It's yeah. like I like I like the the fun experience of stepping on everything at once to get a sound um and i yeah, like see, that i hate it i want to consolidate that down all on the one button <laughs> i love push it. the button chorus i love <laughs> it and like if i were to do all in one i wouldn't actually do kemper because i don't prefer the way the kemper does all in with one. the remote yeah, yeah i, I don't kemper i don't remote. prefer that yeah um and the helix would probably be my choice now i would love an axe effects as well but like that is not something i'm looking at dropping it's a lot um, of money yeah and like i don't i don't need that and so like brian and i are gonna yeah. kind of we already are putting a little more effort into making presets for the axe three but like it's not even our main focus so, so yeah moving forward well i've been using it as my primary device so it's like all the songs we do i have programmed in the axe fx3 but moving forward like when we when we cover a song we're gonna try and have helix kemper and axe fx and ax8 Patches for all of them. But it's a massive undertaking, so... It is hard. I mean, we just... We, and with worship tutorials, we don't... We're, we're not interested in, cle- you know, pledging allegiance to one yeah. system. Yeah. We want to serve... Even the, if we got, we like, wanna serve free the units, I don't think yeah. we'd want to do We want to serve the community. So, like, I know there's... And one of the reasons why I, I, I wanted to get it an Axe Effects is because there's, there's a lot of people playing Fractal, but there weren't really, a, like, content creators mm-hmm. serving that worship community and i wanted to be i wanted to be you know involved in that so um there were some really good questions in here uh one question was um uh do you think helix is going to replace or lion six is going to replace the helix soon which i think is an interesting question i think i don't think they will go ahead no i i have like a i don't really have a formulated answer but like I know that they're always working on firmware, mm-hmm. so like always. I mean, Axe pushes out firmware like once a week at times. It seems like it's there was a time crazy. where I felt like you were getting an update on firmware every couple days, and it would be like one of them was like new reverbs, and then the next week it was like, oh, here's the King of Tone yeah. overdrive, which sounds awesome. Yeah, which I, King of Tone is probably my favorite track. Yeah, though. Um, I think I think we're at an interesting time because people keep releasing stuff. Mm-hmm. And like these companies are just one upping each other. They slightly. So we yeah. ha- I have no real reason to think that they would release another Helix because I mean we don't really we're yeah. not in the know. But I don't know. I think they'd have some other major pr- uh, modeling creator would have to release something else. So I think Fractal is going to release an AX8 Mark II. Yeah, like the smaller, so it's got less DSP, less options, right? I don't, and I don't know what that thing is going to do. If it has the same modeling sounds as the Axe FX3, mm-hmm. that would be cool. But if they put the same amount of power into it with 12 foot switches, with scribble strips, like it's going to be like a $5,000 deal. So I don't know what they're going to do. Yeah, that'd be really to, hard. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do to cut cost on it because the Axe FX3 is their flagship. Yeah. And so if they release an AX8 II, it's going to have to come in like below the Axe FX. Maybe they won't though. Maybe it'll be, I don't know what they're going to do. So that could be... If they uh, released an all-in-one floorboard unit that was like the Axe That sounded 3, like Axe FX3. I would figure out how to get one. That thing would be... But I don't want to carry. If I'm going to carry around three bags to get everything in, then I'm going to I'm going to do my pedal board and my Kemper. Well, speaking of Kemper, you're, <laughs> he's borrowing mine. Like I keep pointing over here because that's where my Axe FX lives there and my Kemper lives there. But they're both empty slots right now because Brad has my Kemper, and my Axe FX is downstairs in a bag still because it, it came home from rehearsal yesterday or two days ago. Um. So, uh, yeah, the um. Uh, Helix 2, I th- they're going to release a predecessor to it, and I'm going to pre-order it the day it releases, because I love the, I love Line 6. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we'll make presets for it. We that, will. that will be for sure. Yeah. Uh, they, I do know they've got some really cool stuff coming via firmware. 2.8 yeah. is coming soon, yeah. and it's got the King of Tone in it, and 3.0 is going to come. That's all I care corner. about. If the update and, uh, was purely a King of Tone. I know, I know some rumors about 3.0, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. So, um... 
they are going. The thing that's cool about these units, though, is that the the processing power, the way computer you know processing technology is, it's like we've come to a point where there's enough power on them that really it's down to like writing the code. Yeah. And so like they can release updates and make these things way better. And Kemper does the same thing. Kemper's been out for what? How long? Six years. I think it's even longer. I feel like it was like and it just, 2010 or 11. They just keep making it better. Yeah. Because it doesn't need more horsepower. It mm-hmm. just needs better better I don't, features. I don't even code. update my Kemper because it yeah. does exactly what and I so, need it to do. so like Helix, I mean, they could they could roll out firmware 3.0 and they may say, we made the amp modeling better, you know, because they, they rewrote the code and made it better. Uh-huh. And like it may be better than anything else on the market. And yeah. so they may not even need... It, we're getting to a point where they don't need to make new hardware to like completely almost reinvent the product. They does that, does to, that make sense? I yeah. hope that makes sense. Yeah, they just need to they just need to keep working on the product they created. Cuz yeah. I mean it's like it's like TVs. Okay, really how much better can we get how much better of a picture can we get right now? Like 4K 8K, is almost kind of creepy. 8K is the next thing, but a lot of people say that like 8K and 4 there's no discernible difference. Yeah, to the human eye, I'm going to be surprised. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's something we've seen, Brian and I talked about this, we see a lot of questions that people use, and this is like gear in general, mm-hmm. where people say a lot of like, how do you do this? Or Oh, like how to dial in the heat. How to dial in this, what, or what happens when you switch how to dial times. in revert, reverb, or how to dial in delay, or how, do you how to do this. Staging? Yeah, Lots of how-to questions, which We're I understand. we address some of that in some video series. Yeah. We've well, been planning for a long time. There is that. So we'll, we could give... Our approach, because we could be here for a while doing that. But I'll say this: the way Brian and I learned these things yeah. was by actually doing it. So right. I feel there are times where I spend more time on social media, watching other people. I read a gear. lot of forum posts. Yeah, back in the oh, early yeah. 2000s, mid 2000s. Yeah, um, before YouTube really came into its. Yeah, YouTube is amazing. So there's two things: either yeah. Just watch videos that people like. There are a lot of great people. Like that, I found a video that the other day. That is a great resource. Oh yeah, to learn and about Pete game Thorne. staging. Pete Thorne. Yeah, I watched those two channels. Well, and uh, so there's sorry, lots of channels. Three, what are three? Let's three channels that I think people should watch. That pedal show, Pete Thorne, and um, Tim Pierce. Tim Pierce. Oh yeah. Well, I watched a video the other day um, from Pete Thorne where he's like he has others. I didn't really dive into it too much. But he talked about like how to use a tube screamer and how he prefers it, and, yeah. and then he talked about how he doesn't like using mm-hmm. it. But so watch some. So this, I mean, there's a lot of people. You can educate yourself. Yeah, there's a lot of people asking like, how do I do this? Like somebody asked if we could provide different presets for like Gretsch and Les Pauls and Strats. Oh yeah, and that like, would be so hard. We. We want to get stuff to you guys. If we did that, we'd be sitting around all day. Like, because even still, we're not going to give you a preset that everybody's going to love. Right. So, like, if you spend time, start from the beginning. Learn what it is about your guitar that makes it different from another guitar. So, like, I know what makes a strap different from a Les Paul. Like, from the most part, the general statement is a Les Paul is going to be beefier. And mm-hmm. so, if I'm going to, and, and they tend higher to be, have output. higher output pickups. Ten, these are all generalizations. Warmer. So yeah. just kind of, if you learn this kind of thing. Um, oh, Rick Beato. Oh, yeah, dude, that dude's guy insane oh, music theory-wise. Awesome. Okay. So I know a Strat, typically if I get a preset and it's all too bright, I know to start a few places. Turn down, like, presence, treble a little bit. Sometimes you still want that. Sometimes you all got to do is turn bass up. And or if the amp has a cut control. Yeah, like, which cuts like, high end. Like, the, this was a hard thing. I didn't know this for a long time. The AC30 and the matchless stuff have cut. Cut if you turn as you turn the cut up, high end gets rolled off because mm-hmm. it cuts high end. Yeah. So a lot of times, all you got to do if, if a if a sound is too bright is turn the cut slider. Just up, that, like just that, and it will warm it up. It yeah. Sound, it just rolls high end off, and so the lows become more present. It's so, really nice. So like if you're, or the the opposite for uh, Les Paul, if like you see us doing a video with a strat like the opposite mm-hmm. like you may need to you may want more of an edge of breakup sound and like it may not quite be there whatever basically and if you have a helix or you have like any modeling unit where we we make a preset for and you're worried about messing it up copy our original preset 
and then edit one of them. That way you can always go back to home. Yeah. But like, just tinker, just mess around, like just watch other videos. I mean, not because we don't want to help it. That's, mm -hmm. but the problem is, is like, we, we can't actually spend a whole bunch of time giving specific details on everything. Yeah. That, that's not, that's now, not doable. We do, we want, there's two things we want to make that we're going to work on. So the worship manual is out. It was a Done. massive product, massive product. Fuller and I worked on it's nine hours of content, 50 videos. Brad and I have formulated two course ideas. One is called the basics of effects where we go through different effects types and just talk about how to get different sounds. Mm -hmm. Cause there are some rules that you can follow. Like with overdrives, if you set your amp so that it, if you really dig in on your bridge pickup, it starts to break up a little bit. That's the mm -hmm. edge of breakup that mm -hmm. you hear all the time. That's Love what that it. means. And then if you take an overdrive pedal and turn the gain way down and the drive way up or in the level, the gain way down and the level way up, it pushes your amp. So you don't get a lot of gain from the pedal. It just pushes the amp into more overdrive. That is a really pleasing sound. And for the style of music we do, that is like that's how most people do it. It's yeah. not you don't have to. If you really like the way a pedal sounds, you can gain the pedal up, turn the level back a little do what bit. You want. And you may like it. But for the most part, that like with a tube screamer, that's that's the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, we're planning a series on that. How to set your delays up. Uh, there was a question on Instagram, series or parallel delays? And I answered yes. Because they sound different. Do yeah, you want your delays different. to feed into each other and sort of smear? Uh, then go in series. Do you want them to like dance and like be a little more pristine? Uh, that's parallel. It's just different sounds for different, you know, objectives. But so we want that. And then we, we also have a, a series. There were a lot of questions like this too. How do I learn how to play worship guitar? Mm -hmm. We're going to make a, a video, uh, uh, a lesson. These are all going to be courses uh, called... Uh, uh, what, what were we going to call the it? The Worship Guitar Manual or something. Yeah. Like that. Guitar for worship. You know, how to play worship guitar, basically. And we're just going to talk about how to approach playing this style, playing like lead guitar and hybrid rhythm lead stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so that stuff is coming. We're going to make we're going to make a lot of content for you. Yeah. We're excited about it. Yeah. Okay, Zach F., thank you for your super chat. Thank you, friend. We need to see a Worship Tutorials Tone Junkie collab. Just saying. We did Where it. Where have you been? Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, Worship Tutorials and Tone Junkie uh, do collab. We are now offering... In two different ways, actually. Yeah, we are offering... Uh, and we're after we go eat cheeseburgers, which we need to end this thing so we can go eat the cheeseburgers, Brad. Yeah, because there's no parking spots. Oh, man. Sorry, I guys. can't park over there. It's more about food than it is you. <laughs> so... Um, we are updating all of our Helix patches and HX Stomp patches with... Tone Junkie IRs, and the IRs are going to be included in the patch mm -hmm. for free yes. for you. Uh, that is our collab with HW. And we also, Junkie. some of our we Kemper performances them. we use their Oh yeah, profiles. we've been doing that for a long time. We have. Yeah, so, the Kemper performances use their profiles. Yes, they do. As well as Sailor Sounds. Alright, one more good question. I want a good one. I thought you found one. No, that's what I'm asking for. Uh, Taylor versus Martin... Versus oh, breed, that's a boring breed that's love. A, that's a boring conversation. I've played a breed love before. Red's not into the acoustic guitars. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not into. I'm not into. I like which one's better versus. I prefer Martin guitars. I do too. I like Taylor guitars sound and play really good. I've only played one or two breed loves and I wasn't like blown away by them. They have but nice I know a lot though. of people really like them, so mm -hmm. I just I don't think I played a good. Or the one that maybe it wasn't set up well or whatever. Yeah. Uh, we have the McPherson carbon fiber guitar, which I've been using to record with, and I I that can is a whole other animal. I can equivocally say this: I've never heard a better sounding acoustic guitar mm. on a recording ever. Yeah. That I've made than that than that carbon fiber uh, uh, McPherson. We got a review of that coming soon. Um. Let's see. Tomatoes on your cheeseburger or not? John McClary? Brian doesn't like tomatoes. Not for me, but for Brad, yes. But I do like ketchup. Mm. Curious. Yeah. You put some sugar and vinegar with it, and then it's all good. It's ketchup. It's ketchup. Yeah. Um, Someone's asking him to go to guitar. I just grab whatever one I haven't played the most gosh. lately. 
Currently, I my don't. That's Elliot, like the hardest. But that's decision. the newest. That's the newest one. I never can me. decide what to play. I'll say this: at my church, uh, the sound guy prefers humbuckers. I will say I know that if I take if I bring a single coil, he's gonna pull all the high end out of it, and, yeah. it, and I don't like the way it sounds. And so I typically play humbuckers at my church because it just fits the way the the way he likes to run sound better. Mm-hmm. So I, I like my go tos for church Sometimes are sometimes you gotta do the, it that the way. The Duesenberg, the Gretsch, uh, or the Alt T are probably my go tos for church. Yeah. But like just when I pick a guitar up and play it, I don't know. It's kind of. I get on a kick for whatever one. If if we had a go to guitar, I'd probably if I had a go to guitar, I'd probably only own that one guitar. But here was here was a question, uh, a couple a couple questions um, about me and pedals specifically. What's Brian's pedal story? Why doesn't Brian like pedals? Because he do has you, a Helix. Do Next, you have, do you have a pedal rig? Here's 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 why. I actually had. a off, pretty awesome pedal. If you're board. gonna say what you, which if you're gonna say what I think you're gonna say, I think it's a lame reason. But go on. <laughs> I had a pretty awesome pedal board back in the day, and I still have one that I think is pretty great. Um, and I ran it into a pretty cool amp. I actually had dual. I had stereo amps for a while. I remember I had the Agape and the Blues Jun- the mm-hmm. Humboldt Blues Junior, yes. which was a cool combo. Uh, so I ran a board into two amps, like I was that guy. Um, and uh, my board had, I have uh, two or three drives from Will Sledge FX. They're awesome. Shout out to Will Sledge FX. Mm. And I had, uh, I had the, the Eventide Space and the Eventide Time Factor. Solid Which combo. to this day are two of my favorite sounding reverb and delay pedals ever. Uh, I, I really liked the Space and the Time Factor. They were both great. And uh, I did not have a very good compressor. But that was pretty much it, my rig, right? So I had drive and and reverb and delay handled. <laughs> and I ran that into two amps. And I just and I led worship from that. I was never I was never just a guitar player. I was always leading worship. Yeah. And so I would get to a point where I'd need to make a change for like a part of the song. And I would <clears throat> I found that it was it was hurting my ability to lead well. Because I would have to look down and step on multiple things to, to get a different sound. And so as a worship leader, it just didn't work for me. Um, and Brad just talked about how he loves to do it. And he's a worship leader. So it's like you, you're just it good at it. It gives me something to do. Yeah, but I just it, it, it distracted me from doing my primary thing, which was leading a song. Mm-hmm. And so I moved from that whole rig, which sounded awesome, to a Pod HD500X. Which many people would say is a downgrade. Yeah. But for me, it let me... Um, but I loved it. And I thought it sounded great. And it let me lead better. Because I could yeah. do I could do one button moves. And once the Helix... And I didn't play the HD 500 next that long. But once the Helix no, came that out... Was, that was only like not even a year, right? Or something yeah. like that. Once the Helix came out... And you can't do like scenes on the HD 500 X or, or snapshots. Like it's not quite as one button press move thing. But once the Helix came out, I was able to like, I just started doing everything per song. So I would just hit a button for verse, chorus. And so like when I'm leading a song, all I have to do is look is press one button. I don't even have to look down. I can just kind of see it in my peripheral vision. And so that's why I moved away from pedals. It was not because I didn't like them. It was just because it, it kept me from doing my primary job. Yeah, as well as as I could have, and that was my that was my uh, my focus. So, um, well, your other reason, which I thought you were going to say, is you only like to carry one bag in. Well, that's or one a trip, big, one car trip. That's a pretty big factor. I like one, and once I was like after a while with the Helix, it was just one bag and one guitar, and that was it. Yeah. Man, <laughs> I got spoiled. And so, but now I play. I don't. I don't lead as much now. I still lead some, but. Um, I play lead guitar mostly, but I still love just like programming a song and like completely changing like five or six different things with one button, whether it's Helix or Axe Effects or whatever. I love it. You do the same with the the art. You can do that with pedals with like something like the Mastermind. Yeah, the RJM is. Somebody did ask about switchers. I love the RJM. Mm-hmm. It's a little pricey, but like, yeah. I don't. There's just the way it works and. I, the way it's set up and the way you can set it up and the customer service, all that is kind of unrivaled. Somebody doesn't like my mug on this Mac. It's, it's empty. It's empty. Um, I got we we got 
three quick ones I can answer but real I, quick. Isaac, I, I'm with you. <laughs> that would make me nervous, too. Somebody said K&K or Anthem. Anthem, that's why we have three. Oh, I used to have a K&K. Yeah. Pure Western in my D35, and I switched to an Anthem, and I could not be happier. Yeah. Yeah, that's one we can answer. Um, I have heard the K&K Trinity system, though, which has a microphone built into it. The problem, is really though, is they good. need like a preamp thing you got to lug around with you. Like it has to sit yeah. on the ground or something like that. Or that's enough for me strap. to. Yeah. Yeah, but the one I've seen ones like this big. I yeah. Said, no, thank you. I don't. I ain't had to mess around with that. Somebody asked, why don't we play Fenders? Because Sirs feel better. MJTs feel better. Shelton's feel better. I'm sure. A, like a so those are guitars that would be comparable to like a custom, custom shop. shop yeah. I'm sure the custom shop Fenders would feel just as good. We just don't have them. Yeah. I think if we were to get our hands on a custom shop, but like. Custom shops tend to be more money. Yeah, because Fender, it's, it's like a it's like having a custom builder like the mm -hmm. one dude who's building a Shelton, right? Yeah. But he works for Fender, so he had like Fender's got to get their cut, and yeah. the makers got to get paid. So I think yeah. I think that's kind of um, well. So that, that brings up part. another conversation, real quick. Like this guitar right here, right? This is like boutique. One dude put this together. Or I don't know how many people Shelton has, but it's a very small shop. Yeah. Um, this would be like buying a master built Fender. And so this guitar, you can buy a Shelton Skyflight 4 for about $2,500 to $2,800. Right? You can buy the comparable Fender for about three dollars to $5,000. Well, they do make them cheaper depending on who your builder is. But if is. it's a master built... Well, if it's master it's a five. Yeah. It's a $5,000 it, There guitar. are different builders you can and buy. And so, like, it's... Like, people talk about boutique and being expensive, like, but if you buy the the comparable thing from like Fender, you're going to pay more money for it. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, so that's kind of why also. Yeah. I don't know, but cool. Um, Fuller said Keggy was dead on with the description. <laughs> I love that this thread is gone. Joshua, play the McPherson. Joshua, the McPherson is downstairs. It's in the case because I had it at rehearsal. <laughs> uh, we're going to do the review on it soon. It's, yes. The world will hear just how awesome that thing sounds. Yes. It is incredible. Chris Sly was over, and Chris was like, the first thing he played it, he strummed a chord. Joshua, this is good. Chris strummed a chord, and he, and he looked at the guitar, and he looked at me, and he goes, the way this sounds makes no sense. So and so Joshua and I were talking the other day, and Joshua was like, "We just want people to understand that this the carbon fiber guitar, like people see it, it's not like a plastic guitar or like an ovation or something. Like the thing really does sound incredible, and it's it's made it's not made of wood, and people wouldn't expect that. And so Chris played it, and he was like, "The way this sounds does not make sense to me. That it just made so me good. laugh." I said, Chris, can I quote you in the review video we're going to make? And he said, absolutely. <laughs> it sounds so good. Yeah, it's, it feels it's amazing crazy too. good. Yeah. Um, so, uh, anyway. Derek, uh, thank you for your super chat. We need an episode on vocal mics. That would be a good one. Hey, Derek, check this out. Well, what's funny is... Um, this Brian's is not a live that, vocal mic. No. I borrowed this from Fuller. This yeah, is you, this. what do you mean? Vocal mic? Uh, probably I think live. He's, he's probably I, talking live. live. Yeah. Which I would say... I, I think, like, bang for your buck, really high-end. Well, first of all, if you get a, a Shure uh, Beta 58. Or just a regular Or just SM an SM58 or Beta 58. That's those sound really good. They're like 100 bucks. Yeah. Buy a new one. Don't buy used. You don't want somebody else's mouth germs. Yeah. Just buy a new one. They're so let's, let's, let's do it real quick, and then we got to go eat. Uh, SM58 or Beta 58 would be, like, your entry. Like, that's going to get the job done. Um, if you want to take it up a notch, I think the Beta 87A... And like, it's only a small notch. Yeah, I think that's like that thing sounds incredibly good. In fact, at at our Durham campus, we use uh, we use Neumann capsules. Well, I don't know what Neumann capsules they are, but if you know anything about mics, you know Neumann is ultra high end, expensive. Yeah, this like their Sennheiser Neumann collab wireless mics. Yeah, like so that. it's the Sennheiser is the wireless. Uh, transmitter part of the the mic and then the Neumann is the capsule which actually captures the the um it's like the grilled the sound yeah, yeah grilled that's head. what makes the difference in the sound with like some other stuff in it though. yeah so um yeah so uh those things sound really good but i think for certain vocalists the beta 
A sounds yeah. as good or better. Yeah. And re- mics really depend on the vocalist. They can. Which is brings me to this. If you're in a studio setting, I borrowed this from Fuller. This is a Slate Digital, is the name of the company, virtual mic. So you run this with their... It's basically like a Helix of microphones. Or, or, yeah. or a Kemper. Kemper, yeah. I don't know why I stopped you, because I was... Yeah, it was I've the always, same thing. I've always said Kemper, so for some reason my brain It actually like, is kind of right. a little more like Kemper, because what they did was they took this, and this is like ultra-flat frequency response. So this has like no character of its own, right? That's what makes mics great, is they'll... Some of them will hype certain frequencies, or, sound, you know, they have their own little character. Uh, this one has like... Has no personality going in, but then Slate has a plug a plug-in system that works with it. That where they sort of profiled. I'll use that term for you. Profiled like really really high end like uh, mics you can't even buy anymore, mm. like from the fifties and stuff. And this thing sounds awesome. I, I I borrowed it from Fuller, and after tracking two songs with it, I bought one for myself to use. In studio, because it sounds really good. So you just use it, and like, if you want it to sound like this a, is not a live mic, though. Right. If you want it to sound like a, you know, holy grail, thirty thousand dollar Neumann microphone or whatever, you can do that. Yeah, yeah. So you can, it, yeah, you can make it sound like a a, a U forty seven, a U sixty seven. Uh, 421. There's a lot of mic models they have, but it's really cool. Anyway, we got to go. Thank you guys for your comments, for your engagement. Uh, I know that there were tons of questions that we were not able to answer. Um, so uh, I apologize for that. Uh, I did say I see a lot of like interaction in the comments, people That's talking awesome. with each other, which is really really cool. Again, follow Worship Tutorials on Instagram. Uh, WT Tone is going to go be phased out soon on Instagram, and uh, we're going to combine them. And then subscribe to us here on YouTube if you've not done so already. Yeah. Um, you get we don't we don't annoy you. Uh, subscriptions you can set notifications. You don't have to get a notification every time we do something if that if it's not something you want. Yeah. But um, it does mean that uh, YouTube will keep it on the front. So if you open YouTube, you can see that your subscription just posted something. So there's a little something for everybody. But you can also get a notification every time we're live, every time we upload something, um, which that's very beneficial. I, I do, but that's obvious as to why I do, I think. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else, Bradford? I think that is it. We're going to go gonna go eat. Now, the way we end these things is always awkward. So why don't you pick up the... Uh, the guitar over there. That guitar. That guitar. And play something. If you're going to play John Mayer, don't play too much of it so this video won't be demonetized, Bradford. <laughs> you always... What is this? you played this before. It's a one and a seven, so it's... Very dissonant. That's what the heavy metal guys do. Here, I'm going to leave my coffee mug here so you can see the worship tutorials. All right. Bye, everybody. See you in the next one. <laughs>